Welcome to Trading Lounge and the US indices for Thursday, July 7, starting with the S&P on the daily chart here. So just looking at the bigger picture here, um, as you may know, there's um, a few different ways to count this down. This is a, a fairly conservative uh, bearish picture. Um, in that it brings us down to the 3400, 33 into that sort of area here. It's also possible to have this as the A, the B, and then one, two, three, four, and five here, and having a low in place at this point. I wouldn't go to calling this low in place here uh, until we had. Um, well, either a strong five waves up through here, and then we were, even if we had a strong five waves up into this area here, then we would have to wait for the pullback and then trade the B wave up. So it would have to be above the five waves. So if we do get five waves up, up to here somewhere might not reach the 4000 if we do get five that if we do get five waves up here then we can look to go long above above the top of the five waves because that way it would um, prove that there's more to go at that particular point so uh, when we look at this picture here just sort of on a sort of an emotional level really the markets come down it's hit this large number here the 4000 and it's it's played around here for a while and couldn't hold and drop through it it's very normal to go back and retest it before dropping again but uh in that process it can also you know have that low here and then find support here and then move back up so it doesn't really give us sort of any answers but i do know that when a market's moving through a large number like this we will see this type of behavior and then coming down to here and, and then this is why we normally short the lows we would start at here then we'd move up to here and then we can move up to uh to to here and uh and then we could probably move up to uh here as well and we'll be taking a bit of a look at that but before we go um i just wanted to have a look at apple because while we're looking at that bigger picture this is an intraday chart though but it's still at the top of the market here <coughs> now I think this is important because we've also got a bigger bearish picture for the for the uh, US indices as well. But one of the reasons I don't think that's the case, like um, seeing a, a massive sort of depression coming in, is because I don't. There's stocks like Tesla that we've talked about and looked at, and this Apple's another one here, where we only have three waves in the first move here. We don't have five waves here. If we had five waves here, then that's a possibility. But because it's in three waves, it's corrective. And then we've got the A wave here and probably label that a WXY here as a B and then a nice C wave, but a, an A and a B and a C. We don't have five waves here for this. So that means that this is corrective and it means that the rest of this will be corrective as well. So then the puzzle and the trick is to <laughs> to solve that puzzle so we know that we've got the a wave here the a b and c for the b wave here all that's pretty clear so then we're trying to figure this out what this is down here and how this relates now obviously apple's one of the big the big uh tech stocks and um so it's important and uh so in counting this down here, we've looked, I've looked at this as one and two here, and then all the way down for the third wave here. It's a little bit hard to see, but it fits nicely. The fourth wave pulling back to the fourth wave here, and then five waves down here to make wave one, and A, B, C for two, five waves for one and two here, then one and two here. This is a little bit tricky here, but it's one and two in here, and then three to here, and four and five for the third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave for the third, the fourth and the fifth to make the third and then the fourth over here and then coming down now uh this here is an interesting little sort of area here as well because if we take wave two here for example and go down to wave three low here the 38.2 percent retracement levels here and the top of wave four is over here so normally i would just go, take this top here and this space here and and say that well that's the space that would be looking at for this wave four to pull back in anywhere in there is good you know and then we could also look at this too if we had this wrong because we're also looking at this is wave one to the downside uh here um which we are looking at um as a 
alternative count here. So this is the spy here. So an, uh, an A and a B, and then one, two, three, four, and either wave five down here is the low, or wave one and two here, then one and two here, and three, four, five to finish off down here for this. So in that case, if we were looking at this as being wave one here and wave two here, then we can also look at this being from here, just roughly speaking, we can look at this here being the 61.8% area through here. So that's obviously um, an important area. And then also the 78.6 at the 147 would also be um, uh, important as well here for, for for Apple. But this count here, you'd think that, well, you know, could we put that, what does that look like if we put that over the, over the S&P here, you know, um, that means that we would need to put this wave four here, here, and this wave three over to here, and then call this wave four here. So that's possible. So if, let's just go for an example here, we've got this as wave one here and two here and one here and two here in this case and three, four, five. And in the bigger bearish picture, we've got this case as well. But what happens if it does push up here a little bit further? We'd also know too that that would be the 38.2% retracement level. And maybe we could extend this out and have this wave four sitting over here in line with Apple. So that would kind of make sense if that was there. And there's other stocks like this here as well. So I just wanted to present that today. <coughs> and it's something that we could sort of work towards because what will happen if, let's just assume for a moment that this is correct, right? And um, and then we, we, we come up here a little bit further um, and then we just have five waves down and that's the bottom of the market. Well, that bottom of the market here will be the bottom of the market over here, won't it? So we've got to bring them in together somehow. Also with this here as well, um, I don't know if I've got on the 1K tick, I'll just check, I'm not sure which chart I put it on. So uh, that's that was the sort of old count having wave four here and wave one and two, but just counting up here, we've still got more to go up. If I put this on 100 ticks, it will have the other count on here. So this is looking at it as an A wave, a B wave, and going up for a C wave here. So if I was counting this up as a C wave here, then, because the, this is important because we might get this with the NASDAQ and the S&P as well. So wave one here, two here, and we counted one, two, three, four, five for one and two, and then one and two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five for three, four, five for three and four, and going up for five of three, and then we can have wave four here, or it could pull back to the, to the wave four of one lesser degree. I'm not sure how that will play out there, but then we've got wave three, four, and five here. Now, if I've made a mistake with this, well, then my mistake would be that wave five would be in here and would have just one more move to the upside. So the NASDAQ and the uh, S&P have got a situation where they can fail right here, right now. But when I look at Apple, we've got, it, it does appear that um, unless, because we've taken out the top here anyway, so we've got to finish our five waves up here. So I think that we've got further to move up here to make wave C or four over here. Or we could have it as wave two, but I think wave four is more appropriate. And I've pulled it all that bigger picture apart and, and dived into it and had a look. So I think that we, we could be looking at something like that. So we've either got a top in right now um, or um, we've got uh, a bit more of a push to go to the upside here. So that's kind of important. So when we go over to the S&P here, we know that that's really the 61.8% at that point there. If we go to the intraday and have a look at the bigger bearish picture here for a moment, So the biggest bearish picture is one and two here, and then one and two here, and then down for one here and two here. So it's, you know, we're in, we're in the, the third of the third of the third here, of the third, you know. But I don't think this is the case, this big count, because it's not what I'm seeing with Apple and Tesla, you know. So anyway, it's, you know, it's just a matter of building a case and it's a puzzle and needs to be solved and so on. So what we've been doing here is that um, even without being a really massive, big bearish picture here, which it could be, but it just sort of not really sort of adding up, 
uh, just a trend line through here. We can remove that. Um, so we looked at this here as wave one. It was pretty hard to get five waves up here. You know, it was you could kind of force it, I guess. Um, but at the same time, it was also forcing it to get five waves down here for wave one. It's not the best looking thing, especially on the cash market. It doesn't count down as five waves on, on, um, on the cash market. So it's a bit of a tricky one. I, th I, I know that we're in a correction here. That, that much I do know because this is, this, um, this counts as, as corrective. I mean, like I said, you could force it to be five waves, but it's a, it's a bit tricky to do that. Um, it's also, tr you know, to call, to call it, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, yeah, to call it five waves is, um, it's a little bit tricky, um, but also calling this move down here, um, you know, because you could call that five waves to be bullish and five waves down here to be bearish, but it's it's hard to get the five waves down here. You kind of got to bend the rules a little bit, you know. Uh, this move here um, appears corrective, but we could also have this as an A wave here, a B wave here, and a C wave here for for a B wave. So this all of this here could belong to this this move down rather than this move to the upside here. But one of the interesting things here though now is that, um, let's got to adjust an order, sorry about that, just got to, okay. Sorry about that. I just like to do a bit of day trading while I'm working. Um, so yeah, so from this high to this low here, we're at the 61.8%. And um, it doesn't mean that the market's going to turn here, but it most, you look, it can do. It's quite haunting and accurate sometimes, but other times it's so way off, it's sort of why you bother. Um, but normally you would see some sort of reaction there. It's, you know, the pendulum just swinging from one side to the other. And we can count five ways from this low from B to C here that's the thing so we could have a low in place now the other thing that I wanted to talk about here <coughs> is that uh, it's about the trading level so between 3000 and 4000 we have uh, the Fibonacci sequence because the Fibonacci sequence really is just one two, three, five, and then eight. And then when you get to eight, yes, you can go to 13, 21, um, and, and, and those numbers, but but really it's just one, two, three, five, and eight. And then it goes back to one again. So instead of going from eight, you'd go to 10. So 10, 20. I mean, 21 is the Fibonacci number, but 20 in the markets is a much bigger number and it's got a lot more psychology to it. People will be thinking, if the market's heading up towards 20, people are not going to be thinking of 19 and 21. They're going to be thinking of 20, you know, and that's where the orders will build up. So the psychology of it, the zeros and that come into it. But for this sake, between this and this the trading levels are good because they break down, they look at the problem, they break it down into sections. So going from three to four here, there'll be one, two, three, five, and eight. So we know that one, two, and three is group one. We know that if the market comes down here, it's going to bounce off that. The midpoint's important, the five, that's the, you know, between five is the second strongest number after one. So one is the strongest number, then five, then eight, and then three, according to me. So whatever that means. So um, if the market's going to come down to the five, it's highly likely it's going to bounce off that. If it comes down to the three, it's highly likely it's going to bounce off that. Anyway, this is number eight here. And when we talk about eight, we talk about group two. So it's a, I won't go into that too much, but group two is 36.50 and 37.20. So that all makes up group two. And um, the they're part of the Fibonacci numbers in, in, in a certain way. They're just sort of halves of things and so on. But you can see that, you know, the job of group two here, <clears throat> and then we go back up above four and we go one, two, three again, and then five. So this is the important bit here. All of this market at the moment is working. It's all about this number here. But when we work with this number, it's also about group one above and group two below. That's the swing range for this market. 
So, yeah, while it's in that space, we need to be careful because once it finds this number here as the resistance, the 3650, then we're leaving that number. If we get a tested support on top of number three here, then we're leaving that number to the upside. So inside here is where you can do all the damage, so to speak. Obviously, most people are day trading, so a lot of that doesn't sort of matter, but it kind of matters down here where we are at the moment with this group two here, because first of all, we know it's support. We got this low and we got this low here. So really what we can do here is we can look at the number eight here. And if we get the number eight as a retested uh, resistance, so if we look at the market, just very simply like this here, there's a very simple thing as the resistance to start from the low and come up, then we can look to get that first position here, do the same under here and the same under here as well. So that will get you, you know, three positions at that point and then it will be a bounce off the five and then you can short under the five and so on. Um, so yeah, if this area here becomes the resistance or you see the market into this space, then you know that you're in group two. So pay attention and, uh, you know, look to short at that point. So we're looking for a short trade, but looking at um, looking at Apple over here, it's also possible that Apple hasn't finished its little move up through here. And a lot of the other markets haven't finished their little moves up here. So we could be still going up at this point. Now, the thing is, is that this move from this low here up to that point there counts as five waves. So from B to C here, that's five waves at the 61.8%. That's the end of it. So what happens if, um, you know, if Apple's going to move up, are we going to get another little move up here somewhere, you know, and what, what does, what does that mean? You know, so, uh, first of all, uh, let's go in and have a look at the, uh, intraday on this. So from 10,000 ticks, we'll just go to, uh, 100. I don't know if I've updated it or not. Probably messy as hell, but okay. So just bear with me a second. So yesterday when we're speaking, we were down at wave B here and we're counting up. I think we're in here somewhere. And, um, yeah, so uh, well, there we go. We can look at this as wave one here and two here, and then we were counting up here. Let's just get this into perspective here. So we had this as wave one and two and one and two and uh, three and four and got five for the third, fourth, fifth. So we're around here somewhere when we spoke. <coughs> now, We've got this sideways pattern here across the top of group one because we're looking at number eight now. And then when we talk about eight, which is a minor level, because we had uh, eight, then we've got sub levels here, one, two, and three again. So we, we they're fractals, all, all the numbers of fractals of each other. So um, like I wouldn't go to short above this level up, up, up here. I'd need to be below this number here. I can be up here and short and I've got um, between 38 and 39 here, we've got the same numbers, one, two, three, five, and then eight. So we've got all those numbers in here to 39 to the power of 10. So um, anyway, we've got one, two, three here. So we could call all this across here as wave four correction. And then we could look at this as wave five coming up here. So we'd have to look at this as being probably wave one here and a bit of an overlap. Wave two, I'll just check that there in a moment. Um, wave three here and wave four here. So we're pretty much sort of looking at the market being uh, done and dusted at this point. Let me just have a little look in there. So a uh, little bit rough. That's uh, between this wave one here. Obviously, this is the third wave here. There's some sort of fourth wave in, in here, that could be part of that as one and two, one, two, three, four, five, or one and two, three, four, five here, third wave. So then we've got to get wave one and two out of here somewhere. Yeah, I have to think about that a bit. Um, so anyway, uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we could actually have a top in place here for this, right? So um, but we look at Apple and we think, well, Apple's got further to go up. So this can be either <clears throat> wave one here, looks like five waves. Uh, we could just go here as a um, ABC correction and, and move down at that point. 
So I'll talk about where to short it here in a moment. But otherwise, you get one, two, three coming up here, three, four, and five coming up here. This is what Apple's going to do come up to here, then another one here, and then another one here. So I would have to extend that up further to that point. So if I was going to short here, um, then what I would be looking for, I would be looking in group one here. So I would be looking for a few things. So in group one, which is 10, 20, and 30, I would want the number two here, the 38, 20, the number two, to become the resistance at that point. I would get a position here, and then I would build in a position here under the eight, and then we've got group two here, and I'll be building in under here once that becomes the resistance. Because if that becomes the resistance, uh, then it's leaving this number here and going down to the next one. So that would be, you know, that there at, um, <clears throat> at 38.20 as resistance coming up from the low here would be the way to start that off because we could short it here but uh, you could probably get um, if you wanted to risk something then you could go to short under this one here <clears throat> but we'll just put that in a half a position at that point So just to recap here, as far as the crow flies, this um, this here as down for one here, the A wave, the B wave and the C wave pulling back to the 61.8% is finished. But my problem is, is that Apple and some other stocks need to uh, push a little bit higher. So that means that um, this this whole structure in one way or another needs to be extended higher. I'm not sure how to do that. I don't know if I need to look at this as um, as wave one here, pulling back for wave two and then three, four, five, something of that nature. Let's just have a look at the NASDAQ here. So the NASDAQ's in the same sort of boat. I mean, the good thing about the NASDAQ, at least here I can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five. To me, that's nice and clear, and that gives me hope that we're, we can be bearish at this point. Um, also, too, here we've got uh, wave A, and then an A, B, C for the B wave, and then we've been, count as yesterday, we were counting up here as well. So I won't bore you to death with all this. We did this yesterday, one and two, and then we were up here somewhere. So I've labeled it like this. I don't know if it's correct or not. Um, but also here, we can see one, two, three, four, five here. The market can still go higher here in all of this. So if, if, um, if, if I was going to short the NASDAQ here, then I would want this number here, the 800, to be the retested resistance at that point. So make sure that, you know, even if that does go up here and then comes down here, you know, it'll obviously bounce off the 800 uh, and then come through it. Um, and look for that low because it can just go straight back up from that point. And a lot of the times it does. So when you're trading against the trend, which you are here at the moment, you need to have you need to have more boxes ticked than 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 normal. If you're in a, if you're trading <coughs> with the trend, well then you know you're a little bit. The trend will look after you if you don't get your stop too close. But trading against the trend, which we are here uh, on this degree of structure, then that's a bit of a, a bit of an issue. So these are all um, part positions. So the eleven thousand seven hundred and twenty here, because this is all of group two as well. So we've got the eight here. Wherever you see eight, it's um, going to be part of group two. Just depends if it's going to be a micro level or a sub level or a minor level or a major level. Um, but basically, this is group two, and you can build in short trades um, through here. And this is eleven five. This is um, this is a medium level here, uh, and it carries you know doesn't carry as much weight as a as a um, major level, but it carries more weight than than a minor level or that's minor group two here. So here we've got group two here, uh, the midpoint here, the five hundred is a medium level, then group one here. So really, full trades and bigger positions can come under this under this level here under the this here as the resistance but this will get quite 
will see a bit of a mirror image of this over here. So you're going to have to leave your stop out of the way. But the fact that it does come down finds group two as the resistance. That's the important point here. Once that become, if that becomes the resistance, the eleven thousand six fifty, then you know that you're bearish at that point. And with the seventy two becoming bearish, the eleven thousand seven twenty, then that's like your first inkling of hope. And it's an odd number, but a funny old number. But I really like seventy two. Well, it's half of one hundred forty four, isn't it? Where Gann and, and Fibonacci meet uh, for the first time at that number. Um, and then it's got to do with the nine, <clears throat> as they say, the nineness of it all, if you're into mathematics. So, um, yeah. So is that the top? That's the question. I don't see why not in this market. But like I said, with um, with Apple um, and some of the other stocks, we've still got further to go up. So if we are going to short, we need to be, you know, we either need to see five waves down um, from here. We could look at that as wave one and two here. And then, you know, uh, well, if we do that, we'll look at that here as wave one to here and then wave two coming back up here somewhere. And then wave three is going to be a bit longer, isn't it? So it's going to be sort of in here somewhere. So this is what's going to happen within group two here. It's going to be something like this, you know, um, and then there'll be some sort of um, probably smaller than what I'm drawing here, of course, but it'll be something like this, you know. So if you can see that five wave structure here, that's also going to be helpful for you to to look on the short side. Um, yeah, so that's where it is at the at the moment. Um, let's see. This is the 61.8% retracement level. You'd expect the market to be hit there anyway, you know, to, to react at that point. It doesn't mean that the market's going to turn at that point. We would need to be under this consolidation area here. Now that's the support, isn't it? You know, that's the 12,000. The 12,000 and the 11,000 are normally where you get tops and bottoms at these two numbers. They're kind of important, but they're not. This number here is more important. So we can get tops here and bottoms here. But when we take in the putting the big trades on, it's because the balance of the correction will be uh, be here. It's like the 12 coming in to do battle and the 11 coming in to do battle. And this will be the front line here, you know. So the pendulum swinging at this stage. So it'll just take a while for it to um, do what it needs to do. So anyway, that's... Um, that's that. And the Russell here. So with the Russell here, we've got, uh, well, we're looking at it's down for wave one with an A and a, <coughs> an A wave, an A and then a small A, B and C for the B wave here. Um, and then looking at that as wave one here. So an A, B and C up here for this. So we can count, we've been counting five waves up there as well. But I just, and I, and I think we could call those five waves in here, actually. I'm not getting a nice, um, a nice uh, fifth way. I'm not getting five waves here. So, and this here, I've counted this as well as one, two, three, three, four, five for the A wave, the B wave, then one and two, and then one, two, three, four, five for the third wave, fourth and fifth. So I'm only getting five, I'm getting an ABC pattern to here. So the reality here, I reckon, is that this is not five waves down, but if it is, you can short below here for that. And then you would short at the 17 um, because that's also a group. This is group one here, one, two, and three. So getting getting that number here, the number two as the resistance, then that's where the short would come in at that point because it'll be pulled to this number at that point. So this looks appears to be corrective here. So I may need to take the liberty of um, putting wave four here because I don't have a nice fifth wave up here. Yes, it made a high, but an A wave and then an A, B and C, I still don't get that. I still don't get, I don't get five waves in that move here. So then I need to look over here as one, two, three, four, and five, even more so building up, uh, moving up here further for this. So I think that that's where that is at the moment. So we're just taking precautions and looking at everything. So 
First of all, I don't have five waves up here. I don't have five waves down through to here. I could put the fifth wave here in case there is five waves in here, but the short trade would come under this low here, and then you'd look to the 17 at that point. You could go long from this point here as well. That That's actually a trade setup at that point. You've got this here as an ABC correction. So you could go long at that point, but um, I won't put that on the, on the table because I don't know how far we're going to the upside. Um, you know, and this is um, this does give us a five wave move down here, a bit short on this one, but this one's a bit longer than that one. That's okay. But once again, we could look at this here as an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here for this. You know, as a corrective move, and then looking at this as more of a bullish move to the upside. So that's possible. So anyway, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. We're not. We're not there. We're not there yet. I can still see that the Asian markets need to move up in the next session. So um, look, maybe we're looking at Friday uh, for short trades again. We'll see how how that plays out. Alrighty, I'm going to leave it at that. But just to just to recap um, with the with the Nasdaq, it is possible to have the top in here, right? I don't think it's the case because I still see Apple needs to go up. But if it is the top here, then the 11.8 as the resistance would be the first position to the downside at that point, and then under the 72 here. And it's the same with the S&P 500. We can call a top in here for this. The move down through here is not the best five-way structure. You could probably make it so. Um, but in this case, we can look to go short uh, put one position under this a small half a position here, but the other position really needs to go under 38.20 as the resistance. And really what you're trying to do here is you 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 understand that you know this all of this here, all of this here, right, is all about this number here. So having that number on your side to the short side is that's when you're going to feel safe. You won't feel safe otherwise. So if you don't feel safe, then these positions here need to be smaller. So yeah, look, that's it. That top can be in place, but it does appear Apple and some other stocks can move a little bit uh, higher. So we'll prepare for both. Alrighty, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.